In 1984, if you were shopping for a pair of speakers and had about $570, which is about $1,700 in January 2024, you could purchase a pair of Yamaha NS-200M loudspeakers. These guys were rated for a maximum amplifier of 100 watts. It's a 6 ohm speaker. It's a fully enclosed speaker, so there's no ports on the, the, obviously there's no ports on the front and there's none on the back. It weighs in at about 36 pounds. The woofer is just shy of 10 inches and the tweeter and the mid-range are made of titanium carbonate. You also have the ability to adjust the response of the tweeter and the mid-range a bit and we'll see how that affects uh, the frequency response when we get into our measurements. Speaking of measurements, when I did the uh, SPL uh, frequency response measurements. I'm one meter away. There's one watt uh, going into the speaker and the microphone is pointed on access. It's pointed pretty much down the center of the speaker at about the height of the mid-range and it's one meter away. So both speakers were measured with the microphone in the same spot and you'll see that data in just a little bit as well as the impedance that I measured for each speaker. I'm going to show you what the back looks like. There's really not much there, just the, uh, the kind of terminals that they use to connect your speaker wires into. And then I'll show you data for the frequency response and the impedance, and then I'll tell you what they sounded like. I wanted to give just a closer view of the Yamaha NS-200M. This would be our left speaker, and obviously you can see the controls. This is the high range control and this is the uh, mid-level, mid-range control they call it. And this kind of just shows you a close-up view of the drivers. And here is the back side. You can see it has the standard kind of push in uh, speaker wire terminals. Now the one thing I wanted to point out is the top of the speakers right here and these are just a few inches from the top. Normally that is not how your speaker terminals are mounted. They're usually at the bottom of the speaker, maybe a little bit up from the bottom. But for whatever reason, Yamaha thought it would be a good idea for you to uh, connect your speaker wires all the way up the back till it gets to here. So I, I'm not really sure the, the logic behind that, but that's the way it's done. And you can see there is an L here for left speaker. Here is a plot showing the impedances for both the left and right NS-200M loudspeakers. Now, there's two settings I did for the tr left speaker only where I set the treble to max or where I set the mid-range control to max. And uh, those would be the green and red plots. And you can kind of see at the high end of the band, there's a little difference there, but it doesn't really affect the impedance very much at all. As far as the scale, this bottom line is 4 ohms, and then this would be 6 ohms, 8 ohms, and then 10 ohms. And we're looking at 20 kilohertz here and 20 hertz here. So that's kind of the scales. And you can see our left and right channels are pretty darn close to one another. We really don't hit 4 ohms. We're probably close to 4.5, 5 ohms, worst case, at a couple spots. But... Uh, the worst case impedance or the, the greatest impedance is, what, 44 ohms, I guess, here, probably around 65 hertz, it looks like. So that kind of just shows the uh, impedance. Now, if you're curious how the phase looks, I plotted the phase for just the right channel, and the controls were set uh, for flat, both the mid and the tweeter controls were set to the flat position, and this is the scale in degrees, and this is our phase right here, this red line, and then this is the normal impedance, which you saw, and it kind of just gives you an idea of how the impedance uh, varies both the phase part and the real part over frequency. What we are seeing here is the frequency response of one of the NS-200M loudspeakers. In this case, what I'm doing is showing the effect of the grill being put on or taken off. Now, let me point out 20 kilohertz is here and 20 hertz is over here. 
and our 90 um, SPL would be this line going across. And you can kind of see that we're above and below the SPL line. I'm not sure if you averaged all this out where we would be, but probably a bit less than uh, 90 dB SPL. So this trace right here, the highlighted one, is with the grill off. And you can see that with the grill on, this trace that's highlighted now, in some parts of the band, it is indeed lower. As you start getting near about 10 kilohertz, it looks like it does cause a uh, suck out in the high frequency response for part of it. And then they kind of match up there at the high end of the band. And it's similar behavior with the other speaker. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring up the other speaker. And this is with the grill off. And I should point out so far all the... Uh, controls that you can adjust the mid-range and the high uh, treble controls are all set to flat so here is our other speaker and you can see i'll just highlight one of them this is the first one and you can see that both the speakers kind of match in their frequency response and it's really pretty good considering that they were put on a stand and moved off the stand and trying to get them in the exact same spot and everything and it shows that the frequency responses are pretty much the same. Now, some of these suck outs, this suck out right here is due to my room, and I believe this one is, and probably this one right here. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and turn off one of the speakers, and I'm going to go ahead and set the mid-range control to minimum on the speaker, and you can see I'm going to highlight the mid-range control set to minimum trace, and it's kind of obvious that this area here is definitely decreased due to the effect of turning the mid-range control to minimum. So now I'm going to go ahead and set the treble control to max and highlight that trace. And you can see that the trace is greater in the high frequency band, at least uh, probably starting here at about 5 kilohertz. It starts boosting the treble a bit. Now, if we put the treble to minimum, that's this trace right here. And you can see that definitely cuts that treble down quite a bit. So you have quite a bit of uh, control over the treble at the high range. And then let's bring up the uh, mid-range control to maximum. So when the mid-range control is maximum, let me highlight that. It didn't really change much. So the mid-range, at least for this speaker, it did not uh, change much. Let me uh, pull up the other speaker and see if it changed, uh, if the mid-range going to max changed much there. So that is our other speaker uh, all set flat, and now the mid-range is set to max. Now for this speaker, that's the highlighted control. It did affect it uh, a bit more. It kind of boosted up some of the treble maybe a little bit, but it really didn't change anything greatly. That's kind of the frequency response of these two speakers. As you may have noticed, the right speaker has its grill removed so that you can see that they are indeed a symmetrical pair. And on the serial number, one has an L and one has an R next to it. As far as the test data that you saw, the big takeaways are that both speakers aged about the same. Data looks pretty similar for each speaker. Also, the impedance varies down to as low as about 4 ohms for some of the frequencies. So if you were going to have a pair of these, you probably want an amplifier that can handle 4 ohms without any problems. Also, from the frequency response plots, it's probably a good idea to boost the treble to max. When I did my listening tests, I did have them on max. I also moved the mid-range between max and uh, normal. For my listening tests, I replaced my Klipsch KG2s with these guys. Obviously, the right's on the right, the left's on the left. And the KG2s, and now these, were powered by my Project One Mark XX integrated amplifier. And if you want to know more about that, you can check out episode 30. It's rated at about 45 watts into 8 ohms. I towed these in to the proper amount that I thought would work. And I listened to a variety of music. 
and they sound pretty good. If there's one word that I would use to describe the sound, it's smooth. Uh, it's, it doesn't get too high, it doesn't get too low. Speaking of low, um, I like more bass. Were I to use these and wanted more bass, you, you would need a subwoofer. But when I cranked it up a bit, there's no distortion, really nothing breaking apart in the speakers. They just, they just sound decent. I mean, they're, they're a pleasant thing to listen to. They're not going to give you the detail or the uh, transparency. I wish there were specs for those that we could measure. As, say, a Martin Logan CLX loudspeaker, which, as a side note, those are the most detailed and transparent speakers I have heard to date. For the price at the time, I don't know what other options there were for uh, $570 back in 1984 for loudspeakers, but uh, today, these things sound really good. I, I like my Klipsch KG2s. They, they do a little bit better on the bass and the high end, I think. But just listening to these things with some of the, the jazz and uh, a little bit of disco and, and some uh, rock that I listen to, classic stuff, uh, you know, it did a good job. I mean, I, I think my favorite track was the uh, Pink Floyd uh, Time. It, it just sounded really good. They are a decent sounding speaker, and if you're looking for a speaker to polish off your vintage collection or you have a, an office space or you know a bedroom or something and you want a decent speaker that you would just enjoy listening to, these would definitely fit the bill. So I would recommend them. Once again, if you have any comments, please leave them in the description. I try to always respond to the comments. Also, if you like the video, you, you know, give the thumbs up. And if you have not subscribed to the channel, that would be a nice thing to do. And once again, until next time, have a great day or night.